Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take an early quick look at the new features in macOS Sonoma. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group and we're that thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now macOS Sonoma is the new version of macOS also known as macOS 14 that will have probably around October of this year. Apple announced it at the Worldwide Developers Conference. Let me show you some of the new features that will be coming. So one of the things that's sure to get a lot of attention is the new screensavers or to be more accurate wallpapers because they're not really screensavers. If you go into System Settings and then you go to Screensavers you're not going to find them. You want to go to Wallpaper. Now the dynamic wallpapers are shown here and you could see a whole bunch of them. and They look a lot like the Apple TV screensaver. If you select one like this then you'll see it now as your desktop wallpaper. It's just a static image but it turns into a moving aerial view if you lock your screen. So I'm going to go and lock the screen and you could see here how it moves. Now when I use Touch ID here to log in you can see it's then going to slow down and it will stop wherever it was. So that's now my desktop wallpaper. Wherever it was I stopped here. And as you can see there's a whole bunch of those. Landscapes, cityscapes, underwater, and earth views. Now the desktop behaves a little differently in Sonoma. If you click on it notice that border around the edge. It's a little clearer what's happening if I were to put some icons here on the desktop and also open some windows. So here we've got a Finder window and a Reminders window. Now you're probably used to the idea of using the F11 key to clear everything away and reveal what's on the desktop. and You get this border around it. That's been there for many years. But now you get the same thing if you just click on the desktop which is very intuitive actually and it gets the windows cleared away and now you can access the files that are here. Click again and it brings everything back. But you can use F11 the same way. This is actually highly customizable. If you go into System Settings and Desktop and Dock you can see here under Desktop you've got Show Items so you can have those on or off. You've got Show Widgets which we'll look at in a minute and Click Wallpaper to show desktop items always or only in Stage Manager because this is how it works in Stage Manager in macOS Ventura. So now let's talk about these desktop widgets. If you go to the Notification Center you'll see your regular widgets here. But you can take any one of these and drag it now to the desktop and place it there. So let's put a couple here like this and you can see how I can drop them. And Now when I dismiss Notification Center you can see I've got those that just sit right here. If I open another window here like this you can see how they kind of fade back. You have settings for this. In Desktop and Dock you can see there's a section called Widgets and you can see the widget styles automatic, always monochrome, or always full color. Safari's got a couple new features. One of those is Profiles. So here you can go in Safari to Settings and then there's a new section here for Profiles and you can create a new profile. So I can create one here. Let's call this uh, Normal for normal use and I could set a color to it. I can choose whether or not to create a, a new bookmarks folder for this profile or use the existing one. I'm just going to keep using my favorites folder there. Create that profile and then I'm going to add another one here and say that this is one for Facebook. And Maybe I'll change the color here to reflect that a little bit and then I'm going to use the same bookmarks folder. So now I've got these two profiles. So now anytime I create a new window you can see I can create a new normal window or a new Facebook window. The idea being that I've got maybe this one window here where I'm not logged into Facebook and this one where I am that could protect my privacy as I browse around and go to other pages that may have Facebook trackers on them. Or I could simply be logged into one Facebook account here and one Facebook account there. Or maybe I've got two Google accounts, one for home, one for work, and I have a profile for each. That way I don't have to keep logging in and logging out. Now you can also create something called web apps. So Web App is basically a website like I'll choose Mac Most here and I'll go to Add to Dock and I'll say Add. And Now I can quit Safari and I can see in the dock here here's this Web App. If I launch it you can see here it's like I'm in Safari but it says it's the name of this website instead of Safari. And I'm just in this one website so I can still navigate around in this website if I do Command Tab for switching apps you can see it acts like it's an app. If I launch Safari that's a completely different app. 
So you can see I've got Safari and this web app here. And if I were to click on a link here that took me to another site, you can see how it actually does that in Safari. It doesn't do it inside the web app because it's a different site. So there have been third party apps that have done this for a while and they've been really handy. I think having this as a native feature is going to be great. A new feature in Notes is going to be the ability to link from one note to another. So I can select some text here and I'm just going to control click on it and say that I want to add a link. You can see I can actually enter a note title. So there's this one here and I could link to this note. So now when I click here it takes me to that note. So you can now have interlinking notes of all kinds which is going to be great for organization. There are a couple new tricks in Reminders as well. One is you can create a new list and set it to the type of groceries. So we'll create this and now when you add an item it's going to categorize things. So I'll add milk here and I'll add ice cream and you can see how it's putting them in different categories like that. I could just add to a specific category or I could add something else here and we'll figure out the category for that. I could drag items from one category to another if it gets them wrong. And you could also just create a new regular list here and then in this list you can add things. And then you can go to Edit and there's Manage Sections. So I can add a section here and I can call this uh, Test 1 and then I can add another section as well. We'll call this Test 2. And now I've got two sections here. I can drag items back and forth between the sections in this list. Now a big new feature for any video conferencing is going to be the new ability to do overlays. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to share my screen with another computer. And now this is what I'm sharing here and I can have myself appear as something small and I can move it around like that or large so it puts the screen in a little window. So you have a couple of neat options here for presenting your screen and yourself at the same time. You can also choose these things called reactions here. I can click there and I can use reactions like for instance I can click the little celebration one here and this is what the other person will see. I can also do gestures instead. So if I put my thumbs up right next to my head like this you can see it does a thumbs up reaction right there. If I do a heart shape with my hands like this you can see it does like that. So autocomplete works a little bit differently in macOS Sonoma. Watch as I type something. You can see here it's gotten gray the letters that it wants to autocomplete and if I just hit space it does. And It also sometimes appears like this. So you can see how autocomplete can make it a lot easier to quickly type things if you just kind of get in the habit of looking for those words that are there in gray and just hitting the space bar and going to the next word. I spotted something new in the accessibility features. If you go down into them and then go into display there's a new setting for text size. If you go into here you can see various different text sizes for different apps. So you've got this default setting here and if I increase it like that you can see how it increases there on the desktop, here in the Finder, here in Mail. If I set this to the default but I go into a specific app and change it. It will just change it for that app. So this isn't changing the items here on the side. I assume you can still do those using the regular settings that we already have in Ventura. This is changing the content in there. It's something that we didn't really have before. So now if you have trouble reading something in just one particular app you have the ability to go and change that. And I assume more apps can be added here. Maybe even third party ones. Also in System Settings if you go to Siri and now you have the ability to have the two word combination or two words and one word here as well. Now if you're wondering which Macs will be able to use macOS Sonoma it's no big secret. Apple has it right on its macOS Sonoma information page. For the most part it's newer Macs with Apple Silicon, you know, the M1 and M2 chips in it. But you can see here in the list older Macs including some models from 2018 and 2019 will be able to use it as well. No doubt there are a lot of smaller features we'll also be getting with macOS Sonoma and there may also be new features that are added later on as we get closer to release. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.